Hello, I'm Dave Doyle and welcome to GeoLearn, Fundamentals of Geodesy and uh, in this session we're going to be talking about vertical datums and geoid models and there's actually two sessions uh, on this particular topic. So let's go ahead and get started. In talking about vertical datums, uh, you really have to break them down into two different realizations. Uh, one is a tidal datum, that is a, a datum that reflects the interface between the water and land boundary uh, along the seashore, gulf, or, or um, in the Great Lakes. And the other is a geodetic datum, and we're going to spend a little bit of time talking uh, at some depth about both of these. But um, essentially a tidal datum is one that is defined by the tidal variations at a specific location. So somebody comes in, puts a tide gauge in the water, typically off of a large dock. It's there for some period of time. It measures the, the land-water interface, uh, again, for some period of time. And from that, you can deduce, compute out of that, a number of different tidal datums that have uh, a, 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 a number of different functions. Uh, the most commonly known is MSL, mean sea level. It's the one most people talk about. You have mean lower low water, mean high water, mean higher high water, and we're going to go through some of those in the, in the course of today. But because tidal datums are purely localized, that is, they're only good for within typically a, uh, a small range of a few miles from where the tide gauge is, uh, because the transitions of different types of datums can be severe in some cases. In some cases they can go for quite a number of miles, but in many cases they can ch the tidal regime can change in a fairly short piece of geography. So tidal datums are purely local and they are time dependent. Right? Uh, and I'll go through that in a little bit as well. A geodetic datum, however, is one that tries to be consistent uh, in heights over a large geographical area, such as North America. A, tidal, or a geodetic datum is typically tied to the tidal datums. That is, it might start, its reference might start at one or more tidal datum stations, uh, because ultimately you almost always want your height system of your community to be consistent with the tidal datums because that's where all the water's going to flow. It's going to go down to the oceans, down to the gulf. So you'd like those height systems to be consistent. But in a geodetic system, you want a consistent set of heights that will go from, let's say, Maine to California, as, as much as that can possibly be. So in discussing vertical datums, uh, I think it's really important if we first just kind of get a handle on the different types of heights. Now there are um, several different types of heights and regrettably there's a lot of people who don't know much about this. And I'm only going to touch on several of them. That, that is the ones that are typically the most important. There are other types of heights um, that could be described here such as dynamic heights um, and we just don't have the time in a uh, session like this to go into great depth for different types of heights that may not be commonly used. So let's start off with an orthometric height. Uh, the heights that almost all surveyors and others think about, uh, which are commonly but almost always erroneously referred to as mean sea level, such as when someone refers to the height of a mountain. Oh, Mount Everest is X number of feet above mean sea level. And that's a nice conceptualization, but it's really not exactly true. Uh, those heights are orthometric heights. And as it says here, the orthometric height is this distance, and right? it's a distance from the geoid, the geoid being that equal potential surface to which gravity is normal and closely approximates mean sea level, so their, their mean sea level comes back into it. That's the height that we want because water typically flows in relationship to orthometric heights. 